All right, shop time on the Bibster today. On the Bibster every day. It's my life story here lately. Um, really quick, before I get started, I'm gonna give you some updates, kinda let you know where I'm going. Gonna make some changes. Some of these changes were spawned by you guys. Some of these changes were, I was kinda thinking about them anyway, and then they were kinda influenced by you guys. So, uh, very, well, let's see. Let's start off with, Gonna be adding some tubes in here. I've got these cut already. Um, I've kind of had these on my mind the entire time. That's kind of what I wanted to do, <clears throat> just to support this engine cradle even more than it already is, right? So you want this piece to be as strong as possible. There's a lot of weight uh, pushing down right here with the new motor mounts in, and um, just triangulating this will make it even stronger. So. That's going to go in there, and then what I'll probably do is make another one of these that goes off the back side down to this lower bar. So on both sides, so it'll kind of come from here down into here. So I'll do that on both sides. Um, something that hasn't changed, but I probably haven't mentioned it, and I just haven't got to it yet, is that uh, I'm going to put X-bars in here. Uh, so these will be tied in. I just haven't done it yet, but this will be like inch and a half tube, whereas this is inch and five eighths. Uh, come up from the bottom here, and then tie in up here. That's for a couple reasons. Obviously, it's going to strengthen the chassis on this thing, and um, the hydraulic cylinder that's going to manipulate the front suspension will be right there. So that's another reason for it. All right. So the other thing is, if you follow me on social media, you've seen where I've bent and notched this A-pillar bar. So this thing just comes down, ties into this front bar. Pretty standard setup for like a 10 point cage. And then usually you just kind of come in here and you put a crossbar across the front. Um, turned out pretty good. I mean, I'm like it. It's, I'm pretty happy with how the bend turned out. I mean, how the notching turned out because it's multiple bends on several different planes. So you can see it kind of comes forward and bends this way and then it kind of bends into the chassis that way so i really like how it turned out the problem is even though it looks good i mean when you look at it from the side you can't even you know you can't even really see it in there like it's tucked pretty tight right i mean it's not i mean it's not like it's hanging way down the problem is when you take four inches out of the roof of one of these and you and you take eight inches out of the center of it it's already cramped and then you start putting more tubes and stuff in there it really kind of invades invades your space you know what i'm saying and as cool as it is and as and as strong as in as it would be to have this thing as a full cage i don't really know that it needs it so i'm kind of on the fence about that um, a lot of people had mentioned when i posted it on social that it was a safety thing you know safety first do that but you know this thing i mean it's not a race car I mean, I seriously don't ever see it being on its lid. And even if it did, it's got a six point in it. So, and then with the X bars and the doors, I mean, really, it's going to have this bar up here. You know, worst case, it's going to go straight to the, you know, this thing could only crush in a little bit. You know, it's not going to be, so I don't know. I mean, I hate to even talk about it being on its lid, but I just don't, I just don't know that it's 100% necessary. But instead of making a decision right now, I think I'm just going to keep rolling and i'll come back to it i think without it once this thing's totally done a lot of these bars are going to disappear and it won't look like just a six point you won't even really notice it you'll notice there's a you know a back bar and then that's really it like you won't notice there's anything missing up front one thing i really haven't done yet is kind of give you guys a look um from inside the car how it's going to look to be seated in this thing so Basically, I mean, there's actually tons of room. You can see headroom wise, um, it's pretty good. Even to the side, I mean, really your head clears it. But I think, I think my issue is not that you're gonna hit your head on it or anything like that. I just feel like it, it just kind of crowds you. For instance, like looking out the front. So that's about what you're gonna see driving um, it just kind of, you know, it's in your way right here, kind of crowds the steering wheel. 
Like that's only, you know, four fingers wide between this bar and the steering wheel. I mean, not that it matters. It is a hot rod and uh, comfort comes second. But it's something that I need to evaluate. As far as strength goes, I'm not that worried about it. Um, I mean, this would obviously add some more rigidity, but a lot of the rigidity in this chassis is going to come from this double frame rail in the center. And obviously the X-bars will help with that, but... I mean, this tunnel, this tunnel, when it's done, I mean, it's going to have, you know, some bars that drop down in here. It's going to have, you know, some bars that go down and across. And then back here, it's going to have some that go from here to there. I mean, all your rigidity is going to be in the center section anyway, along with the outside X bars and all that stuff. I'll even take like this dash bar right here. Um, it's actually going to have some kickers that come off it and tie into that uh, tranny hoop right there on both sides. So that piece is tied into this piece. And so, you know, these won't even really be needed. A lot of questions about the clutch pedal. It's really not that bad. Even though that bar is right there, it's not that bad. Worst case, I'll just kind of straighten out that dog leg just a little bit. Um... But, you know, the brake pedal will be like this, and then the gas will be in the stock location. You can look. You can see how tight it is. It's, uh... Not, I mean, it's tight, but not, you know, super tight when the seats are in here. Like, it's just going to fit perfect. Uh, the seats are just going to touch the bars versus, you know, in a regular car, the tunnel would be out here and the seat would be here, so... Now the passenger side will be slightly different. It's a little bit smaller, but um, still plenty of room. And then as far as like a lot of questions about hitting your elbow while you're shifting. Um, I mean, the shifter is going to be way up here, so you have plenty of room. All right, so I don't know. That was kind of a, that was an inside look on a lot of stuff. I'm sure you guys have questions about. The second thing is, uh, I had I had mentioned, I don't know if it was in a video or on social, but the hydraulic cylinders back here, I was going to put a clamp on them on the bottom, and that was just to basically make sure that, that hydraulic cylinder can't slide out. Uh, you know, if you jack the car up or whatever in the rear and droops, you don't want that hydraulic cylinder just to slide out, or you know, I guess heaven forbid you hit a big bump or something. So I was going to put these clamps on there. These are inch and five eighths. Uh, billet aluminum. I was going to actually mount these on there. Had somebody mention maybe doing a uh, just like splitting that, maybe just splitting this bracket. Just cut that thing on this end and then maybe put a bolt in there where I can clamp this to that. And I don't know why I didn't think of that, but it's actually a great idea. So that's probably what I'm going to do. I'll just cut this in half, put two, I don't know pieces of uh, tubing on either side with a big bolt where I can just clamp that thing together. All right, on to the next thing. So back when I did the cantilever video, um, there was a lot of concerns about, well, there was a lot of concerns, period. Uh, one of them was that this uh, eighth inch sheet metal plate steel wouldn't be strong enough to kind of hold this, uh, you know, from wearing out, I guess, is what the concern was. Um, you know, a lot of these brackets, I mean, this bracket down here might be, what, 3 16ths or something. Anyway, I think the fix to that is to just add another piece in here. And it actually, this arc actually matches that hole pretty good. So I think what I'm going to do is I'll just TIG weld some of these on either side, front and back, and then actually clean this up with a, you know, with a flat disc or something and kind of make it match the contour. It'll kind of give it... A little bit of class and some strength so I think that's what's gonna happen here uh, some of the concern was the center bolt which is half inch some of the concern was this thing wouldn't be strong enough um, double shear on a half inch bolt is like 35,000 pounds and so I'm not really concerned with the bolt I think part of the issue that people were concerned with is there's no bushing in here um, this particular setup you know, if the shock and spring was on the inside and this was solid mounted 
And as you went down the road, this thing was going up and down. I could see you needing a bushing in there. But in reality, the only time this thing pivots is when you go up or down. So for instance, if I'm gonna go uh, cruise to a local cruising, it's gonna go up once at the house. When I get there, it's gonna go down. When I get ready to leave, it's gonna go up and then it's gonna go down at the house. It's gonna go up, you know, up and down four times. It's gonna actuate four times for one entire trip. And I mean, the way that things have been going here lately, I might get it out five or six times a year. So I'm not that worried about that. A little bit of grease, I think it'll last forever. I have took that in consideration though. I've been kind of looking at some bushing ideas and so maybe that'll happen. What else? Uh, a couple people ask about this bracket. This bracket is a bot bracket, something this whole kit was bought. Um, half inch bolt, half inch bolt, half inch bolt. I mean, everything's half inch, grade eight. That's what comes with these kits. So I know that it's strong enough. And not only that, um, you know, I had people Seriously, I had people like freaking out about the half inch bolt like it wasn't big enough and if you look What comes on a factory Fox body for a shock mount is a half inch bolt so And even the sheet metal is not I mean the plate steel that's made out of is not that thick So that's why I'm not that worried about that uh, You know, I think when I do these kind of projects when I think about these kind of projects I think about Instead of trying to engineer myself from the start to finish, like re-engineer everything, I just look at what has already been engineered by Ford or GM or whoever, what they're using. If they use a half inch bolt to control, you know, to hold the shocks in there and control the, the compression and rebound on, on, a, on a big heavy Tahoe or, you know, a Ford Mustang, a half inch bolt's gonna be way plenty for this thing. This thing might weigh 2,000 pounds. I mean, that's the goal, is try to get this thing super light. You know, my 5,000 pound Tahoe uses a half inch bolt for the shocks and I've got 200,000 miles on it. This thing, 2,000 pounds, and it might see, if it's lucky, 2,000 miles on it. So, anyway, enough about that. Let's move on to what's next. All right, so one of the other things that people are concerned about on this rear end setup was when this rear end articulated like this, which that would be like, rock crawler status this is hot rod i don't see it moving that much but they were worried about uh, putting these bushings in a bind or putting this cantilever in a bind as this thing articulated these springs would move one way or the other which is pretty valid i mean that does happen um you got to think that the top bushing and the lower bushing split the difference of whatever angle degree of articulation you run into so if the rear end moves 10 degrees uh, you're looking at five degrees up top, five degrees on the bottom. And that's not so far out of the realm of these being able to handle it. But to fix that, what I'm going to do is run an anti-roll bar. So anti-roll bars are used in the drag racing world. It basically keeps the chassis from twisting on launch. Um, I'm actually going to run it on this particular setup for two reasons. One, the reason we just talked about. Kind of save any kind of stress unneeded stress on these cantilevers and because I plan to have the rear section of this chassis uh, fit ultra tight to the tires when it's laid out that um, I don't really want to give it any room to kind of sit on the body or whatever. So the plan is, and this is a very loose plan as are most of my plans, uh, this will all get trimmed out and go up like this and then the body itself will kind of roll along through here and follow the tire. So let me see if I can, so it's gonna roll up through like this and kind of follow the tire like that and then do some kind of something back there. But what I want is if the body is like this, you know, under, drive, under driving, when you lay this thing out, I want the body to kind of sit almost right on the tire. Very similar to that. So you can kind of picture it sitting like this. Now, if you have, you know, if you allow it to articulate a bunch, you're going to have issues when you go to lay it out in a parking lot that may not be level. And so what I'm going to do is the anti roll bar will kind of always keep that in check and the front will kind of have to make up for any difference. So that's what I've got here. 
So it's just a, uh, it's not solid rod, but it's really thick chromoly rod. And then it's got all the bushings, um, mounting tabs, uh, the arms, the end links, the adjustable himes are in there. Everything I need basically to make a uh, custom anti roll bar. And right now I think it's just going to mount up under this. So I'll mount a tab here, you know, a tab over here, and the actual arms will come off and kind of follow what the cantilevers do. And then I'll have a you know adjustable arm that goes down and attaches to the rear. And... All right, so I think that kind of addresses all the issues that everybody had with what I was doing. Like I said, not that I discredit any of the ideas or whatever that you guys have had. Uh, some of them were justified. But a build like this, you guys got to remember, a build like this is not going to be perfect from the get. I know that. Like, I don't go into these builds trying to have everything figured out from the get. I go into these builds knowing that along the way I'm going to have to make changes as things just don't work. And so, not that I don't think about everything. I just don't let it cripple me. Like, I don't overthink it so much that it keeps me from doing it in the first place. I just go and then I figure it out later. All right, so another big concern, which was very justified, was the way that this front is gonna be set up. So initially, my idea was to have, um, you know, long arms coming off this, going up to the bottom of the spindle, and then have, I was gonna do like an A-arm set up off the back. It was gonna kind of tie in somewhere back in here. I knew that there was going to be some issues with bump steer. Like I, I just knew that that was going to be something I was going to have to deal with. Kind of felt like one of the ways I could deal with that though, well because the arms were so long and it was strutted, so like on a wishbone, double wishbone setup, you have a lot more arc travel because the, a, the upper and lower A arms themselves are really short. Um, you have arc travel on both sides of the spindle, but on a strutted setup you don't have that because the top part of the strut is solid, solid mounted. And because the lower arm was gonna be so long, I didn't feel like there was gonna be that much arc travel or arcs, arcs, you know, arc swing, I guess is what you'd call it. And so the only issue that I was having was the shortness of the tie rod end itself. You know, if I got it in too much of a bind, then I was gonna have some bump steer issues. Uh, that combined with the fact that this thing might have four inches of travel, I mean, this thing's gonna be like a go-kart. It's gonna be way oversprung. It's gonna be super tight. Like I said, this thing's not gonna be made for comfort, but it'll look damn good. So anyway, I wasn't that worried about it. I felt like it'd have some issues that I could maybe address along the way. I really wanted this long axle look, and so that's what I was after. All right, so I'm not gonna bore you with all the details of the fabrication, just because this is experimental. It's not gonna it's not going to be a finished product. It's basically just kind of tacked together and stuck on there just for looks. Why are you looking at me like that? I got dirt on my face. This is what I came up with. Still kind of has the look that I'm after. It's got that front axle look. Basically, it's just, uh, well, it's solid mounted now where the himes were. All right, half inch plate, uh, inch and a half chromoly, and then these, I was gonna put some kind of spacers in there and then do a uh, one inch chromoly tube up top for looks, basically. This is just gonna give it that hot rod look to it. Do a heim, heim joint in here, and on this side, this will be connected to the uh, ball joint that goes in the bottom of the spindle, basically this thing will just either turn into it or be hacked off. There'll be a gap. There'll be a gap here at ride height. And then when you, when when the car is laid out, these would actually come together. I'd have it set up to where they'd come together and it'd have one continuous look to it. Laid out, this thing would probably be down here and have more of an angle to it. That's closer to ride height. And you can see, if I put a ball joint right here, or I mean a heim joint right here, it's gonna line up with where the rack and pinion breaks, eliminating any issues with 
any kind of bump steer. And then what I would do is actually I'd make this an A-arm. So from the front, it would look like a hot rod axle, but there'd be another tube that came off the back here, kind of curved and tied in right there. Let's see. So it'd be another inch and a half tube and it would probably do something along those lines right there. So it'd be very similar to basically what came factory in the Mustangs with the A-arm setup. Um, I think all the geometry be about right this way. So like I said, it'd just be a bar that came up and then curved and tied in with this one. And that'd just be a single bar. I wouldn't use the uh, one inch stuff and no one do any decoration. I'd just do that up front. Try to achieve the look I'm after. All right guys, there it is. See, these projects, they're not, they're not that easy. A lot of times when I film this stuff, I do the fabrication and the only stuff that I put into the video, it looks like I just knew what the hell I was doing the entire time. That's not usually the case. Usually it's tons of experimental stuff. Some of which I'm experimenting in front of you. Hell, I don't know if it's going to work. All right, guys, there you go. A little update. Let me know what you think, if you think that's going to be a better scenario versus the other one, which I already know the answer to that. It's going to be a way better scenario. One of the other issues I'm going to run into as well is the turbo piping. So even breaking this turbo, even breaking this piping instantly right off this header, it's still going to be pretty close to the rack and pinion so I don't know maybe bring it in like this like that I'll probably spin probably spin the turbo down a little bit I don't know I guess I'll figure that out when I get there All right, guys, there you go. A little update video uh, answering some of your concerns or basically letting you know what I'm going to do about some of those things you guys are concerned about. Listen, this kind of thing is not always happy-go-lucky rose petals and works out perfectly. Actually, it never does that. Sometimes it may look like that on videos, but that's not how it works. I'm all the time experimenting, trying new stuff, not afraid to fail. Not afraid to try something and then figure out later on that it's not going to work. I mean, I wouldn't be doing a build like this if that was the case. Um, these are always a learning experience. You always got to kind of figure it out as you go. And the front axle, front suspension, all this stuff. None of it's any different. So just keep that in mind. I know sometimes I probably make it look better. Probably make myself look better than I probably really am. Um, so don't get discouraged. Sure as heck, don't be paralyzed by not having every step planned out. Just start and you'll figure it out. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. I will see you guys some more next week. Go do work, son.